Greetings and peace and love, everybody. You're now tuned in to 13 Signs Astrology dot com. I thank you all for listening. I thank you all for watching. In this particular episode, I want to talk about crystal children and indigo children in relationship to so-called mental disorders that they say that um a lot of us have. Um, I get a lot of e emails and inquiries from people asking me about their children. Um, a lot of them may be baby boomers, some of them are indigos. And they email me asking me about like their children and they got diagnosed with ADHD or they got diagnosed with schizophrenia or bipolarism or depression. And many people are wondering, are these um, diseases curable? Um, do, do our children have to suffer from these things? So that's what this particular episode is going to be about. Um, however, I want to kind of attack this issue from a different angle, because usually when we address mental disorders and things like that, there's really very few people out there that are going to really get into medical astrology and really get into the natal chart and really helping a person to understand what's going on with their mind based upon the natal chart. Because you have a lot of mental disorders and things like that, and they put medical names on them. And of course, we know these names are copyrighted and things like that. And a lot of times, these names really don't cover exactly what this person is going through. They got diagnosed. So say, for instance, a person is diagnosed with bipolarism. That particular person may not necessarily be bipolar. They may be being pulled upon by an entity or some form of a being, and they, another being may be attaching themselves to that particular person. So like a bipolar person may cut themselves, they may do things to themselves to make themselves bleed. And it's not them, it's another entity and it's another being attaching themselves to this particular person. And this is why medical, the medical industry in particular has not really been able to successfully eliminate mental disorders, which I believe is something that when you talk about health and things like that, I believe mental disorders should be the number one on the list of things that we should be trying to cure. Um, especially in the so-called black community and the melanin dominated communities in general because I believe people that have more melanin are more susceptible to mental disorders predicated upon the way that the society is set up and the way that the matrix is set up. Um, people that have more melanin are more susceptible to being depressed for instance or whatever because of the fact that when you have melanin and you're a melanin dominant being you're charged with eating a certain type of diet you have to eat more green foods. See people that are depressed the only thing they need to do is just eat more green foods and that helps with the depression. Now, of course, there's other things that you must do. Um, herbs are not quick fixes, but I'm going to get into some of the remedies um, in a second here. I just want to kind of lay the groundwork as far as the astrological background behind it. So you have a lot of doctors out there that, like I said, they'll diagnose you and, give you and just go ahead and put you on whatever medication at that time is being promoted and say, well, just get on this or get on that. And I'm not here to knock that hustle or to knock that industry. So, you know, if you're a medical doctor, that's what you do, that's what you do. I'm just simply here giving information based upon my own experiences. Every video I did and ever will do is based upon my own experiences of things that I experienced. And I know when I was suffering from my mental conditions, it was herbs and meditation and certain things like that that helped me. But it was also astrology and me knowing what was going on in my natal chart that was causing these problems. So when you talk about mental problems and you talk about astrology, one of the main things you want to look at first is the uh, is different planets. Mainly, there's two main planets. I look well, three main planets that you're going to look at when it comes to any type of mental disorder. And you want to look at how they're configured and what type of relationship they have. And that's Neptune, Uranus. Some people call it Uranus and Mercury. Those three planets are going to be that's what you look for at first you look for those planets and then you want to look at what sign they're in and which house they're in and that's going to tell you a lot about what's going on with a person's mental disorder so i'm going to give you examples of how each of those planets function so those of you that have children out there that may feel like you know because some people they feel like their children have mental problems and they haven't even been diagnosed by a doctor there's a lot of people out there actually like that a lot of people self-diagnose ourselves um and you may be on point you know with some of the definitions but what you'll find out is that when you start reading like the, the, the definition of depression the definition of schizophrenia you might start questioning yourself like, oh I hear voices I might oh, I hear this or am I schizophrenic am I depressed am I you next thing you know you're all of that 
And that's what they want, you know what I'm saying? Because they give you these definitions and you notice that all these definitions start to sound like one another. Like being depressed it sounds just like being schizophrenic in a way. If you read it, severe depression. Severe cases of depression can lead to schizophrenia and hearing voices in your head. So you start to notice that all of these diseases as far as the definitions are linked. So that's why I'm doing this video because we need to look at the planets. Even doctors need to look at the planets to see what planets could be off or thrown off. So like if you're talking about Uranus, for example, or Uranus, you want to look at Uranus. Like if a person has a mental problem, you think they have a mental problem, the first thing you want to look at is their Uranus. And you want to look at it and see a few things. You want to see if it's negatively afflicted, which means that it has other planets that it's not communicating with properly. And you may not know how to really know this. You may need to go and retain an astrologer. So I am an astrologer or there's other astrologers out there. However, I am pretty good at medical astrology. I've been studying it for two years. So a lot of astrologers don't do medical astrology. So you need to find an astrologer that does medical astrology. And you need to find out if your, this person's Uranus is afflicted. You just write this down because you might not understand these definitions. Um, or if it's debilitated in any way, which would mean that it's in retrograde as well. So like if a person has Uranus in retrograde or afflicted, and that goes for any of the other two planets, if they have Neptune in retrograde or it's afflicted, or if they have Mercury in retrograde or it's afflicted, this person is going to be a little bit more susceptible to what we would consider mental problems, being so some people call being mentally retarded or being slow or thinking slow. Or any of that is going to be based upon planets. And with that, if society understood natal charts and understood that people are, some people are more susceptible and have certain problems with their mind, then they can put these different people into different categories. Um, because this is a big topic right now, you know, with all the different violent acts that have been taking place on the news. Most, pe most of these people are mentally unstable. Most of, most of them aren't smart. They're not planning these things out. This is being a meltdown. And a lot of them are indigos, too. And crystals and these this is based upon a meltdown like the guy that shot up the people in the military base i forgot his name he was an indigo i'm just gonna give you some examples all these people that have been getting in trouble some of the boston bombers they were indigos and crystals so if you notice it's the indigos and crystals that are melting down doing very destructive things because of the mental state and the mental thing that's going on so uranus deals with clear audience and hearing voices so when you talk about a person hearing voices, you want to look at their Uranus placement. If you want to see if these voices are positive, because some people hear voices that tell them to do good things. I know people out there that hear voices and they ain't in no trouble. They working on the stock market because these voices are helping them to get good information and they're doing right with it. So hearing voices is not necessarily bad. I don't know people are going to be like, that's crazy, Ron Hotep. How you going to say, you hear voices, that's bad. You, you the person that's saying that out there right now, you hear voices in your head. You hear voices. You hear another voice in your head that's not necessarily your voice. You know what I'm saying? That's all I hear with the voices. Is. Now, do you go and do the things that those voices tell you to do? These are just thoughts. Like, remember on The Matrix when Neo was angry when he finally met the architect? And he had all these voices in his head. One of them was like, fuck you, cussing him out. Another one was asking him questions. Another one was lost. Another one was enchanted by him. Remember that? Well, that's similar to what you experience if you have an active Uranus. Now, some people may hear good voices. Some people may hear negative voices. It depends on if it's debilitated or afflicted. Again, you have to go to astrologer to figure that out. So that's when people hear voices. That's coming from Uranus. When people tend to um, feel like have emotional problems that turn into mental disorders. Because a lot of people have, they're empathic. What that means is that they take in other people's emotions. They take in other people's energy and they take it in and they think it's theirs. They think this is their emotion. It's not though, but they think, say for instance, they walk in a room, they're feeling good. Then they walk in this room and all of a sudden they start to feel depressed. And a person that's empathic or has disorders, emotional disorders, they won't know that they're taking in somebody else's energy. So they don't know that. So they come in there and they're lost or whatever. And they start to feel angry and depressed because they're in this room. Really, they just need to get out this certain building and go somewhere else. And like take in some positive sunlight or some positive energy and release these potential emotions or whatever. So this can lead to these emotions. If you accept them as yours over time, this is how people become, become depressed usually. And this is all linked into the planet Neptune, which deals with emotions. And also the moon as well is another good planet that you want to look at medically if a person is having emotional problems that are leading to mental disorders. So Neptune is the planet you want to look at for that, whether it's debilitated, which means that it has problems, it's afflicted, or has negative aspects going to it. Now, there are some people that 
have positive emotions and they walk into a room and they pick up on people's emotions, even negative, but they know how to separate. And they say, okay, this is, I'm feeling this from that person. And they know that it's coming from a potential person. So that person really doesn't have issues, you know what I'm saying, or any type of mental issues because they're dealing with the gift properly. It's only when the planet is debilitated or afflicted is when it turns into a mental disorder or emotional disorder or depression or a mood disorder. Um, now the next planet would be Mercury. Mercury deals with the real life mental function. So this is the actual mind itself. So people that have real life issues with the mind, like serious issues with nervousness, stress and tension, they have an afflicted Mercury possibly. It's probably retrograde or it could be afflicted, it could be at a sign that's not really as good. So your Mercury is going to tell you your people that should be going to college, people that need to take longer studies and longer journeys. And when it comes to knowledge and information, they're, you're going to look at a person's Mercury for that. Um, now, if they have mental, dis mental severe mental problems, a person is going to have problems with Mercury, Neptune, Uranus, the moon and Pluto, possibly. So those are really it's really five planets you really got to look at if a person is having severe mental problems um, most mental problems again come from entities attaching themselves to the mind whether it's emotional entities whether they're mental entities that are ruled by the air see the emotional entities are ruled by the water then you have the mental entities that are ruled by the air so when you're talking about diagnosing a person and giving them certain herbs and if a person's having severe mental problems they may need to actually call up a herbalist and get a special formula made based upon their exact situation. And that herbalist should know medical astrology. That herbalist should know uh, enough about the mind to be able to diagnose this person. That herbalist should know which herbs are ruled by which constellations, which zodiac constellations. So there's a lot that that particular herbalist should know or whatever if you're going to go to somebody to get diagnosed. So my thing here is just to kind of lay the groundwork for the astrological planets that use your throne off so you can know what to look for. Now, um, on the second part of this video, I kind of want to talk about crystals, indigos, and star seeds in general because we are a little bit more except susceptible and open to having mental problems because of the fact that all indigos, all crystals are ruled by those outer planets. What does that mean? So like if you're indigo child, you're ruled by Uranus. That's your ruler because you're radical. That's what makes you an indigo is the fact that that's one of your rulers. You're automatically the whole generation of indigos are ruled by Uranus. So we all are clear audience to a certain extent. We all hear these voices. We all have certain triggers that trigger us mentally to make us do sporadic things that, you know, people can't calculate because Uranus is the planet of unexpected events. So we're ruled by that. So we're very, very much a generation that's uncalculatable when it comes to our actions. So we're ruled by that, whereas the crystals, they're ruled by Neptune and Uranus. They're co-ruled by Uranus as well, the crystal children are. And when Neptune, but they have more empathy, so they have more feeling than the indigo, so they feel more. Yeah, they go out and do radical things because they have the co-ruler as Uranus, but they feel more and they pick up on people's moods and energy more. So they're a little bit more um, caring than the indigos or whatever, So, but however, when these planets are thrown off in your natal chart and when you have problems with these planets in your natal chart this is what's causing a lot of these mental disorders and nervousness and tension is because we're all crystal children we're all star seeds or whatever and we're different like the way that the matrix is designed and structured is not good for our mental it's not good for our mental state like for instance um if you're an indigo or a crystal child you were alive during the times when we lived in dome structures um or we lived in like Kaabas or cube structures that were built based upon sacred geometry and they were built a certain way. See, nowadays we don't build based off sacred geometry. We live in buildings and we live in westernized structures and this can cause you to have mental disorders because they're not built based upon feng shui or the bagua. They're not built based upon the energy flowing a certain way, these buildings that we're in. So you incarnate to this place in this new matrix that you're used to in your old life when you were in the body before you were used to being in a pyramid or you know somewhere that's taking in energy and giving out energy constantly and it's based upon it sits on an energy grid and it's based upon a certain type of feng shui whereas now we're in these buildings uh up under these artificial lights watching television while we type it on a computer and all this radiation is coming at us and this is what's causing us to be depressed and this goes for even people that aren't crystals indigos but the crystals and indigos we're more connected to the computer 
more so. So we need to definitely watch our nerves and our brain structure. Um, when you talk about manifesting, so a lot of people, a lot of crystals and indigos out there, they want to manifest a better reality for yourself. But you can't do that if you have mental disorders, beloved. You can't do that if your mind is not functioning 100%. How are you going to, even your magic is not going to work if your right brain and your left brain are not balanced. The dark side of your brain or the yin side of your brain is not balanced with the yang side of your brain and the light side of your brain. So these two selves and sides have to be balanced in order for you to be healthy. Um, now, there are herbs that a person can take. Like if you have a mental disorders, you have children out there that may have them. I'm going to give you some free um, advice or whatever here. I'm going to name some herbs that you can um, get into to kind of help to balance the mental state. Now, the blessed thistle, the blue coash, the catnip, the chamomile, the kava, kava, the lavender, the lemongrass, the licorice, St. John's wort, and the yerba mate. All of those herbs are really good for promoting a better mental function and healing multiple different mental disorders see what you got to remember is that you can take herbs you have to take these herbs for at least three months when you talk about mental disorders three months straight you see this is not drugs you see these are not quick fixes it's not a band-aid drugs are like band-aids give somebody a band-aid they put it over it just to keep it cool for now it's not going to heal the sore you snatch the band-aid off you're going to be in just as much pain so herbs heal the actual problem they remedy the problem these are medicinal remedies and those herbs that I name are, you know what I'm saying, you, you can make formulas with them, you can do a lot of things with them, but that's going to lay the foundation of healing your children. You're going to need those particular herbs to heal your children, to heal your, your star seeds out there. Um, you're going to need to teach them meditation. They need to connect with those voices that they're hearing and, and talk to those voices in a reasonable fashion and ask these voices, what do you want? Why are you coming at me? Okay, it's time for you to leave now. Like, don't invade my personal space. Like, you need to teach your children that these voices that they're hearing are real life entities and beings that exist. See, that's the thing, like they are trying to say people that have mental disorders are crazy and that the voices that they're hearing are just made up voices in their head when a lot of times these are intelligent voices telling them how to construct bombs and do things that it takes intelligence to do. So my question to you is that if these entities are so, or this, this is just made up, how come these children and these people that are listening to these voices are getting so much information to do intelligent things? Now, whether or not, it's, of course, it's stupid to go blow up a group of people in a building, period. Or to go shoot up some person in a building. Of course, that's dumb. So I'm not saying that it's intelligent what they did. What I'm saying is that the process and what they did to go about getting to the point of them doing the stupid, crazy acts that they do. These were intelligent beings, demons, or dark or kind of entities, better way of putting it, pushing these particular uh, star seeds to do the things that they do. So you want to connect with that. Like you want to meditate and really connect with those inner voices and start to have communion with them, whether good or bad. They tell you, well, you go do this, you go kill someone. Because people say they're hearing all these voices. You ask them, why are you asking me to do it? Talk with it. See, these particular dark entities that are bothering a lot of people, once you start talking with them, once you start having communion with them, they don't like that. See, they don't really want to talk to you. They want you to be scared and to either do what they say or just to suppress it. They like that. When you start talking to a demon or asking a demon intelligent questions and you come at it with light and truth, it's not going to want to stay in your body and your vessel. It'll basically flee from you. Um, you can't give it an opening. You can't eat a certain way. That invites certain demons in. you taking in certain meats based upon uh, the slaughtering of certain animals that were in utter fear when they died. Like you gotta think these these animals were scared to death before this chicken's head got chopped off. And then you go eat it, you take in the emotions of that animal and that fear and that depression, and you wonder why you're depressed. These are feminine animals, a lot of meats. I remember reading something saying like 90% of the meats that we eat are feminine. Feminine, anything that's feminine, feminine beings retain more emotional energy than masculine beings. So if you're eating a feminine base cow or a chicken you wonder why the emotions of this particular animal is resonating with your being and it's causing you to cry you don't know why you cry you can't control your emotions you need to change we, we, we need to really change and you need to have a shift in consciousness have a shift an energetic shift but it's going to start with going within yourself asking yourself why do i eat because i'm depressed because most people you know we eat because we're just depressed we don't have enough and we eat the type of food not just eat because it's cool to eat to enjoy yourself 
and it's cool to experience emotion. So Ram Hotep is not saying be like emotionally bored. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to enjoy yourself, but eat the right foods. Like it's not wrong with eating good food. You can go eat as much food as you want as long as it's good food. Why do we eat these negative foods? Like why do we have to have acidic forming foods, starchy foods? It's because you're lacking something. You need a lot of sweet foods because you're lacking love in your life. You know what I'm saying? You need chocolate and things like that because you're lacking a man that's caring in your life. So you need chocolate to feed off this chocolate to feed on your mood. So saying all that to say that go within yourself, find out where these particular planets are in your natal chart, which houses they're in. Like so for instance, if Uranus is in the 12th house, you already know this person is going to be open to mental disorder, possibly. If they have a Uranus, a Neptune, or a Mercury in the 12th house, that's guaranteed. Or Pluto. Or the Moon. So any of those five planets, Mercury, Uranus, Neptune, um, the Moon, or Pluto in the 12th house, that's guaranteed this person is susceptible to mental, subconscious mental disorders, meaning that this is stuff going on or beings attaching themselves to you that you aren't really conscious of. This is stuff playing on your subconscious mind. So you may not even realize that you have a mental disorder even. So if people telling you you kind of are acting funny or whatever, you're acting weird or something like that. Not to say that, I mean, because a lot of times people might want to just call people crazy. So don't just listen to any person give you some advice saying, oh, you, you might have a mental problem or whatever. Like, what I'm saying, like, if a person that really loves you and cares about you, they keep telling you, like, maybe, you know, you might need to something going on with you you're not functioning right maybe you just need to look at your natal chart it's not to say go run out to the doctor and get diagnosed just go look at your natal chart figure out what's going on maybe get you a medical astrology reading or something to see what's going on and get you some herbs and get you a few breathing techniques and a few crystals and you're good figure out which houses they're playing out in these outer planets because the outer planets uranus neptune pluto they beings attach themselves to the outer planets like when you talk about the land of the dead the land of the dead live energetically now just talk about energetically they live amongst those outer planets so like when a person dies they can still be functioning through Pluto so you can steer that's why you can hear a person's voice and they're dead because they're still functioning through Uranus they can still communicate through the planet of Uranus to beings that can hear them and whether or not you can hear them will depend on where Uranus is in your natal chart so this is when you talk about gifts and people having gifts being able to work with pendulums and work with the dead and things like that. The reason why the dead is responding to you through a pendulum is because of your Pluto aspect. See, that's Pluto that's helping that being to work through that pendulum. So you got to know which planets are affecting the beings. And that's what I'm explaining here in this video is that there's planets affecting different aspects of what you would consider people that have special gifts, so-called mental disorders, whatever you want to call them. They're based upon certain planets, whether they're functioning properly or not. So... I could keep going on and on and on, but the bottom line is is that if you have a crystal child, um, which I'll go to the dates here, the crystal children are born usually in the 90s, or if you have an indigo child, they're born in the 80s, starting in the 80s, they're susceptible to these things, people. So those herbs that I named, get those herbs, get into the breathing exercises, learn about the third eye so you can know how to guide your children with spiritual information. Because a person that is uh, so has a so-called mental disorder, you have to communicate with them differently. A lot of times they're very spiritual. You have to communicate with them from a spiritual motivation. Like when you're asking them to do something, you have to show them the spiritual motivation behind it of why they should do it. It can't be financial or, you know, it can't be anything mundane a lot of times with these people. So I guess what I'm saying here is that if we gave these this group a chance, these people, these so-called mental disorders have really got to understanding who they really are, we might find out that they aren't so mental and so crazy maybe they're special in a way that may be better than the average human because they have basically heightened senses their nervous system their nerves are the cords see the nerves when you look up the word nerves this goes into cords and nerves are like cords and we all have cords that connect us to one another and people that are have so-called nervous conditions or mental conditions their cords are more open and susceptible to being able to connect with other people's cords so this is why they can take in other people's thoughts other people's emotions other people's energies is because of their nervous system and their cords so maybe their nervous system needs to be cleansed maybe their cords need to be some cords need to be severed that they have connecting with certain entities that they don't want to connect with anymore or even physical entities like physical people that may be abusing them Maybe this particular person was molested at a young age and they have to be forced to be connected 
to those people that molested them or that person that molested them. So it could be a number of things. The thing is that first we have to give this group a chance and a shot. And the basis of this video is that I'm saying that medical astrology, um, in particular studying the outer planets, is definitely the remedy to understanding mental disorders and crystals and indigos that have mental disorders. So I hope that video helped. Um, for more enlightening information, I ask that you visit my website. And um, for those of you that are interested, we do have two products that if taken together will help any child or adult with their mental problems, which is the Focus and the Green Stuff product. If you're interested in that, um, I ask that you visit my website. And until we meet again, I'll leave you in. Peace.